A series of terrifying tragedies tested the resilience of Nova Scotians this year. The heartbreak and the solidarity are number four in our top ten of 2020. Here's CTV's Atlantic Bureau Chief Todd Battis. Every corner of Canada has known what it is to suffer in 2020. Perhaps none, though, like Nova Scotia. At the height of the spring outbreak, as it mourned COVID deaths, a horrific crime would shock the province. So there's a structure fire. Uh, there's a person down there with a gun. Uh, they're still looking for him. The patient we have got shot by him. Nova Scotians awoke to news of a manhunt for a gunman driving a mock Mountie cruiser on a 13-hour rampage. Sunday morning, Gabriel Wartman was shot at a gas station, but not before he murdered 22 men and women, including a police officer. I want to know why there wasn't an emergency alert at 8 o'clock in the morning when they knew that that man left port a pic because that would have saved countless lives. His killing spree began in rural port a pic where he burned homes, shot friends, neighbours, then anyone else who got in his way. That included a pair of health care workers shot in their vehicles on the side of a road. One was pregnant mother, Kristen Beaton. I got off the phone with her minutes before it happened, and I sent her the picture of him. But nothing was said. I had no idea he was an RCMP vehicle. RCMP were criticized for failing to properly alert the public to the threat, how they responded to the incident, then avoiding questions about the investigation. Making matters more difficult was the necessity of mourning in isolation. People in the province adopted the slogan, Nova Scotia Strong, came together in song, and out of necessity, shared their sorrow online. The province's pain didn't end there. It was hurting again in April, when an armed forces helicopter plummeted into the Mediterranean Sea. This is another very hard day for Halifax, for Nova Scotia, and for our armed forces families. The new cyclone helicopter immediately broke up and sank to the seabed off the coast of Greece. Six Halifax-based sailors and airmen were killed. The repatriation of the bodies of the deceased were met with roadside vigils. Just a month later, a second air disaster claimed the life of another Nova Scotian. 35-year-old Captain Jennifer Casey of Halifax died after ejecting from a snowbird jet. The Tudor aircraft, part of the aerobatic team, was leaving Kamloops, B.C. after a weekend air show. May 6, a three-year-old boy, Dellen Ehler, vanished while playing in his grandmother's backyard. An extensive search in Truro and waterways through town turned up nothing. Then, as year-end neared, disaster on the water. Six fishermen died when their boat, the Chief William Solace, sank in rough seas in the Bay of Fundy. He would have been going like this with the boat and the seas would have been going up there and back down. The crew was nearly home with a full load of scallops promising a lucrative payday just in time for Christmas. All of it tested the resolve of Nova Scotians in a year that because of pandemic was difficult enough already. 2020 ends, but the hurt will not. After much protest, a public inquiry into the mass murder was announced. The panel members have been selected, and hearings are set to begin in the new year. Todd Battis, CTV News, Halifax.